blood, sweat, and tears went into this. I'm just very happy to lend my voice to this incredible, complex character. Then let us once more into the fray, old friend. And it's fascinating to think that it, this was all created on a computer because it, oh, I've never seen anything that's so realistic that, that actually is emotional as well. Please, no, don't leave us. The visuals in Kingsglaive, they're pretty awesome and it's all motion capture. So I'm voicing somebody else's face, somebody else's body, their movements. And so it's something new for me. Anyone wish the same for family they love. Your Majesty, please give the order to deploy the glaive. The world they painted for, for me to play in is pretty magical. So the guy who tried it on back there, I guess he wasn't deemed worthy. Nick's, I mean, he, he definitely comes from a, uh, a rough past, but with that said, he is, he's the hero. I'm not used to playing those type of, those type of characters. I mean, this guy, incredible badass, and so that's, uh, that was a lot of fun. That might not be so easy, Captain. My wings have been clipped in case you didn't know. A warning to the victim. Never show weakness, lest you forgo the hand of justice. It's not difficult to get into the character because they are so emotionally involved and they're so emotionally challenging and, and so real. The crystal will not serve you. He reaches, he, he's vulnerable, and it's, it was very interesting to kind of find that balance of a strong man, you know, very powerful, a warrior, you know, but at the same time, very vulnerable. I cannot command the old wall with a weakened hand. I was fascinated by to get that across. It's too much, it's too fast. Yeah, well, yeah. You know what you, ex you, know what you expect to do? Yeah, you wouldn't have ever yeah. said. It is what your king wanted. Doing voice work has its challenges. There's something lovely when you find your pace and you can bring them to life vocally. It's just a different way of acting. It's almost freer. It's not me they're after, it's the ring. What appeals to me about Luna is she is young and yet has a steely determination and she knows exactly what is at stake. And I too have a promise to keep to Nyx. Her sort of strength of conviction is what keeps her moving forward. He who wears the ring communes with the Lucy I and commands great power. What kind of power? A forbidden one, sealed within the ring long ago. Ulrich reporting! I think really what's challenging is you're not acting really off of anybody. So you're just going line by line as if someone is talking to you. Six Niflheim airships confirmed inbound for insomnia. Yeah, it's just, you know, trying to make it believable um, and trying not to lose your voice. Who brought you here? Who brought you here? Let's go, Luce! So, yeah, they sound great. They all sound great. It's just a matter of, uh, you know, sliding matching. It's so tricky. Yeah. See Luna safely to Optisha. This is not an order from a king to his grave. This is a plea from one man to another. It's not until you kind of just jump into it that you actually know where you're going. You know, you can't kind of prepare for uh, a role until you see it. That, that guides you, that determines what you do and what kind of performance you, you put in. But this time, it is not your fight. If you wish to leave, leave now. No. I can assure you it is not, but the Lucy, I grant their power only to those they deem worthy. You know, I just approach this how I approach any work I do, which is from an honest place. True power is not something that is found by those who seek it. We're almost there. I think the people that you're doing it for, when they're pleased and it's exactly what they wanted to feel with a the character, then, you know, it's a good day's work. It's just been such a joy. I mean, I feel weird that I'm not in my pajamas right now. Normally, I'm in my pajamas doing my lines. God, I want to be that cool. <laughs> Is that bad? It's a wonderful experience. It's fascinating. You know, if they're doing it more, I'd certainly like to be. I'll come back to life. <laughs> <laughs> you have the crystal. What more would you take from me?
When I first heard about the Final Fantasy film opportunity, I was really excited because I actually find the world of video games in general to be wildly creative. For Final Fantasy, one of the hallmarks of Final Fantasy is that it is a much more complicated way of telling a story than many video games that are simple good guys, bad guys. In Final Fantasy, even the bad guys are motivated by a code of some kind or a philosophy of some kind. It might be a bad philosophy, but they still have a powerful and consistent way of thinking. And similarly, the, the good guys are not uniformly the same good guys, just ciphers of each other. They have different motivations. They sometimes behave poorly or make mistakes. And this movie is like that too. It has a lot of richness of the characters. Some people will ask, did you take a different approach to the film because it's CG? It's, it's a technological film rather than a full live action. And I say absolutely not, that the film asks for a pretty subtle and complex approach. Many of these characters suffer disappointments, uh, setbacks, surprises, and they change who they are and their response to their environment because of those changes through the course of the film. And so to me, thinking of this or conceiving of this as a cartoon movie or a CG movie or something like that doesn't make sense. It makes sense to create a score as rich as the story is. ですね。今回あの映画ということで、あのまあお話もすごく規模も大きくて壮大なお話で、で求められるのはやはりこうハリウッド映画みたいなそういうサウンドをまあ目指したいっていうお話があったんです。あのゲームのファイナルファンタジー15の方もやってるんですけど作曲してるんですけれども、やはり同じ世界観でこう何らかのリンクはさせていきたいなというところで、まあ共通であの曲も使っている部分もありますし。あの気持ち的にはやはりそこでこう少し違うけれどもでもこの根底に流れるものは何か同じものみたいなものを自分で決めてあの曲作りをしました。Um, there's technology, there's magic, there is civilization, and a lot of destruction. The reason why I decided to use quite a bit of synthesized color is partly because of that richness with the technology versus old magic, and the magic is supposed to be eons old. It's, it's ancient magic. So you have a kind of sense of antiquity, but then you have absolutely modern, up-to-date cars and other technology through the whole film. So that's one thing that informed what kind of instrumentation to use. But then the other part of the musical material is that dark and light. You're constantly moving back and forth from dark and light, and some of the characters who are good at heart nevertheless do very bad things that result in destruction. And so the musical material moves back and forth between major, sort of positive sounding, in minor harmonic language that's more dark and, and serious sounding to reflect that ambiguity and complexity. Final Fantasy の音楽っていうとやっぱりこうすごくたくさん、まあ、あの特にやっぱり上松さんの音楽とか本当に歴史もあって、えー、たくさんの,あのファンの人もいてですごくやっぱり。どうしても期待される部分であると思うんですよね。何かしらの理由があって私の音楽が求められていると思うので、あのそこにやっぱり私らしさというのも存在して、今までのやはりファイナルファンタジーという作品に対して、作品そのもの、それから音楽に対してリスペクトの気持ちっていうのも持って、あのファンの皆さんにも楽しんでもらえる曲が作れるんじゃないかなと思って、あのそのあたりを意識してあの作りました。Final Fantasy fans will like the complexity of the music, 
The scale of the music reflects the complexity and the clash of two huge civilizations that are opposed to each other because they have a fundamentally different view of how the world ought to be. And the music tries to have that struggle. It's rhythmically complicated, harmonically it moves around a lot, and there's a lot of tragedy and loss in the score just as there is in the film. Final Fantasy XV universe, it looks incredible. The two very different worlds collide. We have this kind of modern East meets West, and we have this sort of fantastical, magical land that goes on, and they both marry in this extraordinary way. The imagination to, to actually create this is just fascinating. Kind of juxtaposition and putting one thing against the other, medieval and the modern, and, and it's, it's kind of seamless. You know, it really feels like when you're watching these films or playing these games, it's as if they took 200, 300 million dollars and shot a live action film. キングスグレイブ自身がより多くのお客様に楽しんでいただきたいっていうのがありましたので、えー、まず敷居を下げることそれが一番重要な、えー、ポイントでした、えー、敷居下げるっていうのはやっぱりあの身近な世界からスタートするっていうところで、oh, no! えー、いろんなグリグリの様式を入れて、えー、ファンタジックな世界だけど身近な世界っていうものをあのスタートポイントとするように、えー、世界観を構築しています。We are old, and the old wall. I cannot command the old wall with a weakened hand. えっとレギスはですねすごく難しくてですねえっと置かれている状況的にもあの相反する。あのシチュエーションだったりとかするんですね。あの威厳のある王でなきゃいけないんですけども、えー、自分の力を使って、えー、魔法障壁っていうとあのバリアみたいなものをあの作ってるんですけども、それによって体力が奪われていくのキャラクターなので、それをデザインしていくあの人間らしさもありつつ王の威厳もありつつ、そして弱体化しているっていうデザインを落とし込むのにものすごく苦労しました。ニックスはですね、えー、僕としてはお客さんとあの見ていただく方とイコールにしたいと思ってました。魔法の国であるインソムニアに来た人として扱いたかったので、えー、まずお客さんと同じ点に立ってファイナルファンタジーの世界を体験するっていうところで、えー、まずは考えてました。As long as I got strength in my body, I obey that order. The design of the Mahon 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 あのそういった設定をもとにですね、えー、考えてきました。My duty is my destiny, Your Majesty. I'm prepared to accept whatever may come to pass. えっとルーナはですね、えっともともとゲームの方にも登場する重要なヒロインなので、えー、ベースはやはりあのゲームの方のデザインラインを踏襲しています。えー、彼女はですねあのカンナギっていうあの職業で、えー、ちょっと普通の人とは違うあの特殊な力を持ったキャラクターなんですけれどもそんな特殊な力を持っていながらも、えー、やっぱり人間であるっていうところがあると思って、えー、まずはそこを大事にデザインしていっていますあのキングスクレーブの劇中でですね、えー、衣装が結構あの変わったりとかするんですけれどもそれはやっぱりその人間であるっていうところを
基準にして、えー、衣装を変えていますでいざあのインソムナイに入国した後はそのままあのゲームの方につながっていきますのでそのゲームの方での,あのデザインラインですね。えー、とキングスグレイファイナルファンタジー15もそうなんですけども、えー、とファイナルファンタジー15ユニバース自体の取り組みがあの伝統を守りつつ全てを刷新するっていうコンセプトでやってますので、えー、とそういった点で、えー、とユニークだと思いますあの今までのファイナルファンタジーの,あのテイストをしっかり残しつつ新しいことにチャレンジしていく。えー、全てのお客様に満足していただくっていうところは、えー、とてもあのユニークではないでしょうか。Here at the、um, motion capture set, the setting is totally professional and it looks amazing. The facilities and stuff you can get over here, like the size, the scale of this is just something that you can't really do in Tokyo. There aren't, there aren't any places this big. Here we go, let's roll the cameras. This project involved a lot of new challenges, and the first, obviously,、um, big challenge for us is、um, to hire an actors to do、um, all the 3D scanning and also the motion capture. It's not very different to doing. Conventional green screen shooting, except you're capturing characters and shapes rather than the actual actors themselves. The ceremony is in less than two hours. We must make ready. It's really cool when you see how we're filming, how we're doing the dialogue, how immediately you see how the actors here are transformed. You can see in real time into the characters they're playing. So you've got 60 or 70 cameras on this setup. Basically, they triangulate where the markers are that are on the actor. They track his movements throughout the space, and then we can reconstruct that. Once we're in that virtual environment, then we can spin around and view it from any angle. Uh, it's really useful for the director, so if he wants to frame a shot from a certain angle or, or check different views of, of that scene,、um, it gives him the ability to do so in real time. The director,、um, Takashi, has been very, very great.、Um, he really、um, loves the new challenges. We could have done everything in Japan, but because he wanted to obviously try to get new audience, especially in the West, we decided to get Western actors. He wanted to use the Western actors to make sure he got the nuances and the gestures and all that kind of all the minutiae that go into the characters. He wanted it to be natural for a Western audience. Motion capture を使ってやるっていうことは誰かと一緒にコラボレーションするっていう意味合いでもあると思うんです。そういった形で。やっぱり人間というものを表現していかないとその一人が考えることであのいろんな人の感情細かい感情が表現できるかって言ったら僕はそうは思わないのでどちらかといって言うとやはり実写の映画を今回は撮っていったっていう印象です。Well, I hope you're here to talk. What do you want to know? A great sense of、uh, like、spatial awareness is really useful for actors to, to just visualize that environment because we're essentially stood in the middle of a warehouse, but we're also in a throne room with a massive set of flight of stairs. The, the actor has to create the right eye lines and, and that sort of thing into space, into nothing. And you just have to imagine that this is, these are walls, big high walls, and there's a big statue there. You kind of just have to sort of almost throw it up there in, in your mind's eye, and then you just have to kind of see it. It has been a long time, Your Majesty. Yes, far too long. The throne room, the, the, the palace is vast. And his throne room is high up, so you've got the ground level, and then you've got stairs going up, and then a platform, more stairs, and then the throne way up here. Slightly shallower than the throne, yeah. So you end up looking at the base. 
So they have this intimate conversation, but they are, I don't know, maybe a hundred feet away and on different levels. So she's standing on the ground looking up at him on the throne, and he's up on the throne looking over the level. So from an acting point of view, that was very odd. And imagination really is the big thing, not only in acting, but also in performance capture. Um, you have to be able to be a little loose with your lateral thought of where the environment is, because it can change. Some people might find that a little difficult because they might want to physically see the environment, not just see it on the screen. But um, I think a lot of people get used to very quickly the idea of using your imagination to fill in the world based off the screen you're looking at or based off any of the art concepts you've been given. And after you get that knack, it actually becomes second nature. That feels okay. No, that's okay. Have we done it? Yeah. <laughs> we have lift off. With motion capture as opposed to film, so you kind of have to do the big expressions as if it's theatre again. But if you're wearing a head cam, you've got a camera here. So it's this, your brain goes, there's a camera there, so I've got to do nothing. And then you're like, no, but I've got to do big stuff so they can track it all and... We have the headset on so that they can know our expressions, like every point, every wrinkle on our face, everything can be as realistic as our face. It is hard to get the fine line between overacting and underacting in motion capture, so it is a bit of a skill to master. And if I don't play, it's ready for all. 20 miles to the center. I think we are working 24 7 live in Tokyo. Actually, because of the time difference and everything, they are watching remotely. They are with us for the whole journey, even though they're not here, physically not here. It's a global collaboration, what we're doing here today. It's not easy, but um, it's fun. <laughs>